What's up everybody, FSC Trucking. Well, as you saw in the thumbnail of the video, we're working on Orwell today. We got Orwell inside. The previous video we just got done filming, well, yesterday I filmed it. We uh, got some shop work done in the shop. I had to get Orwell warmed up. We had to add water to him just to warm him up to get him started in the cold. Ironically, it probably would have been easier just to wait for the day for the heat of the day it's up in like the 40s today so probably would have been an easier time just to do a cold start but either way that's what i went up doing so last video we went ahead and started working on the ford cl 9000 frame right here behind me um no that's the white the suburban the frame right here we got the rear axle out of it and i actually have the rear axle sitting over here next to orwell because i posted it to sell it and uh, it and the suspension system that came out of it. And it went pretty quick. A uh, guy gave me a deposit. He's gonna come up in a week or two to pick it up. So there it is. There's the differential for the Ford sit right there. It's just a you know, single axle. So I think the guy that bought it is going to be putting it in a, like a fire truck or something. So either way, that's great for him. I just didn't want to send it to the scrap yard. Now Orwell, decided he was gonna start leaking coolant uh, earlier. It just, sitting out in the cold, it started dripping. And I don't mean a little bit, I mean a good amount. So uh, antifreeze was coming out of the front of the engine uh, over by the front of the water pump section of engine where there's a tube that comes from there. It feeds the charge air cooler. Now this truck is a, doesn't have an air to air, it's an air to water system. So it sends the compressed air through what looks like a radiator the charge air from the turbo goes through a water-cooled intercooler through there and into the engine, but the tube that feeds that is where it's leaking. Now, a while back, we uh, when we put new stacks on a truck, we went ahead and uh, changed that elbow that was shot, put a new one in, and now it's leaking in that section again. So, however, when I brought it in the shop, I left it sit and warm up, and now it's hardly dripping at all. So it's one of those things where a, either it stopped dripping because it's out of coolant, which it didn't use that much, or B, it's a temperature sensitive leak, so it doesn't leak as bad with the engine warmer, but either way, it can't be leaking that much antifreeze sitting outside in the cold. So that's why we brought it in to start tearing it down and figuring out what we're gonna do to it. A couple other odd end things we're gonna look into while we got the cab tilted up. It's due for service. It's not quite due for an oil change. It's certainly due for fuel filters, but since I have the cab up, I'll probably just do a full on service on it anyway. So I have the time and it's inside. So let's go ahead and get started. Also, if you saw, I just set up the Starlink. We're gonna be doing a live as well. So we're gonna, well, if you guys watched the live, you already saw this part of it, I suppose. I tend to try to do both ways to see how it goes, which performs better the live versus the produced videos. I do better with the produced videos, I do believe, but a lot of people like the interaction of the live, so I'm trying to do both at the expense of the produced videos, but there probably is gonna be a large gap between when I do the live and when I release the produced video, which is what you're watching, so hopefully one won't eat up the other one too badly. All right, let's get it started. What's up, guys? It is the next day. Uh, I did a live stream yesterday. I was planning on doing a live stream and a produce video with working on Orwell, but then the live stream got a whole bunch of viewers on it, and things got a little out of hand because, well, I uh, well, <laughs> I had a lot of people on there, and it just turned into a Q&A. So I didn't get any work done yesterday. We got work done today. How we're getting work done today, I should say. However, we got today and tomorrow to get the truck done because Thursday we have to go pick up a striker. It's going to Louisiana. So as long as that stays up to schedule, we're good to go. I found a couple problems with Orwell since I tilted up the cab. So we're gonna go ahead and start draining the water. I found where the leak is. It's not a major problem. It's not a major problem. However, it is a problem, we're gonna solve it. So we're gonna start draining the water out of Orwell and uh, I'll show you what other problems we found. Let's get at it.
now first things first, I want to show you guys exactly how this thing works because it's a little different from the modern truck. So the way this 7FB Caterpillar variant works, 7FB is the serial numbered prefix of this particular 3406B engine, Caterpillar obviously. So here's your turbo, exhaust side, intake side. So air intake comes in, gets pressurized and sent up a tube that goes up over your rocker arm covers and then into a charge air, basically an after cooler, but it's a liquid cooled after cooler, not an air to air, which would be up in front of your radiator. Let me go ahead and show you. Walk on the other side of the truck. And there you see it right here. The way this works is the air comes up that tube into this manifold right here hits this wall basically and gets diverted down into the head. This is the head portion of the intake. There's like a radiator in here, but it's fed via water pipes. Here's the water pipe on the front. It comes up from the front of the engine through the radiator, charge air cooler, after cooler, however you want to call it, and it back down into your block. That's what that is. My point is this is how Orwell cools its charge air from the turbo into the engine this is all pressurized see here it already gets pre-pressurized air into your air compressor most people don't recognize that to speed up the compressor if it's already compressed the compressor can speed up the process so it takes its air through via this hose from the after cooler itself and of course this is your outlet of compressed air to feed your brake system now one problem i found with orwell is right here Here's your exhaust pipe going into the dual exhaust and up the stacks, right? Look right here. It's cracked. Cracked all the way around. Ow! It's cracked all around the top. There's a loose piece of metal right here. So that pipe cracked between the clamp on the turbo and the pipe itself. So this is just pissing away exhaust. This sounds bad. Obviously creates an exhaust leak. It's basically just puking exhaust all around it. But yeah, so I'm gonna have to take this apart and change it out. In addition to working on Orwell today, I wanted to show, because we talked about it on a live video, but we never talked about it on a produced video. Probably wondering, if you don't know, what in the world we're doing with this Suburban right here. My son Matthew is engaged to be married to a wonderful young lady that lives in Columbus, Ohio right now. And once they get married, they're gonna be moving down to well, the southeastern United States where Matthew is. So this effectively is their vehicle. It's a wedding gift from me and Jen to them. The purpose of this is, well, for two reasons. One, they're a young couple, and um, I don't wanna see them have to, to get her a suitable vehicle, see them go 15 to $20,000 into debt, that's one. Two, is I don't want them to have to have a co-signer that might decide to put strings attached to the vehicle that might mean that one day they can't drive it no more. Plus, if you owe on a car for six years, you're constantly making big payments, which a young couple really shouldn't have, I don't think, that kind of debt, plus a co-signer that can pull the vehicle away at any time. So, but this is a straight up wedding gift. It's already titled to both Matthew and Lydia, so it's not even mine. I, you know, I want nothing of it beyond just a gift. Let them enjoy it, drive it, be happy with it, shoot it full of holes, set it on fire, drive it off a cliff, whatever they want to do with it, it's for them to do. But nonetheless, there it is. It is a 1999 uh, GMC Suburban. I keep saying Chevrolet, I'm used to my Suburbans. And uh, there it is. It already has a name. Lydia and Matthew both named it Snow White. So hence, that's what it is. So I picked it up in North Carolina. I did a live with it. So it was purchased by a it was purchased from an old man in North Carolina who basically used it to transport a boat because he used to live about an hour away from the shore. Now he lives close to the shore and he wet slips his boat. He had no need for it. However, it is not in the cleanest or best of condition because like most people as they get elderly, they just don't take absolutely the best care of everything. Nowhere near the way that Jen takes care of things. So what Jen's doing now is she's basically starting to steam clean the interior. Actually, when we did a live, Jen had started doing the steam cleaning, but today is basically day two. She only got the front seats done and the front, you know, the front uh, rugs and so on and so forth. Probably Hi, baby. Have, hi. Probably going to have to go over them again just because. So what are you going to do now, the back seats? Yeah, the floor. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, the front seats, we're going to try to figure out if we could just take the front seats out 
and I sent it to an upholstery shop to get redone. Uh, Gorilla Tape does wonders when your seat's absolutely peeling up. But yeah, um, again, for what I paid for it, this is way better than a newlywed couple taking on a boatload of debt. Plus, not for nothing, a newlywed couple that probably within the next five years is going to give me grandchildren. So, our idea is we want grandbabies to be safe and protected in a big beast of a truck <laughs> rather than uh, some little Toyota Corolla that just crumpled up like a little beer can. First, I'll spray it with some stain spray. A oh, real quick background with the truck. It is a 99 GMC Suburban. Like I said, it's four wheel drive. It has the 350, the 5.7 liter Vortec. Yes, I know it has the spider injector in there and all that whatnot. Um, most likely a uh, 4L60E transmission or whatever transfer case is in there. It does need all new tires, which we knew that getting into it. Um, he did have to replace one of the tires. So he just threw some runoff on there. One tire is oddball sized. But it only has 131,000 miles on it, which considering it's year, that's actually low miles. The engine has 70 on it, so I'm told anyway. He did bring me paperwork from a rebuild, but either way, the engine's got 70 on it, so that's the idea. Um, the paint job, at least a lot to be desired. We are planning on basically, I was thinking it was just going to be a scuff and spray, but I do think a large part of the truck's going to have to be brought down to bare metal, put epoxy primer down on it. And then a nice base coat of white. It ain't gonna be perfect, but you know, it is what it is, right? The thing with North Carolina trucks compared to what's up here is the Rockstar Solid. This thing has no rust on it. So, you know, surface rust here, there, but it's not rusted through. Like you could push on any part of the metal and it doesn't just crumble away into dust. So that was the trick. So I figured I'd give you an update real quick on what's going on, why the Suburban's here, whose it is, why it's here, and yes, another damn project. But you know, it is what it is. I got to do what I got to do to be a good dad and a good father-in-law. So I probably should have mentioned it earlier, but both Lydia and Matthew are heavy into motorsports. Lydia was brought up in a family that did the dirt bikes and motorcycles and all of that. So they like their toys. This is also a toy hauler. Now, I did ask Lydia specifically what she wanted for a vehicle because there was debate on whether they're going to get deep into debt and buy a newer vehicle and have a family member co-sign or whether they were just gonna go with something that I would buy paid off straight cash. So Lydia told me what she really wants is a 94, what the younger kids call OBS Chevrolet pickup truck, exactly like the prized possession of her father. So I was like, that's it? That's all you're looking for? But Matt already owns two pickup trucks, so Lydia decided, you know what? It'd be cooler if we had a Suburban. So there it is. Same body style as the 94 OBS that her dad has. Not to use kid term, but that's what they call it. So we've got the Suburban instead. Slightly different, but it's exactly what she wanted. She really absolutely loves it. They both named it pretty quickly, in fact. In fact, we were talking about naming it, and they were watching my live, and both, I keep calling them kids. They're, you know, Matt's my child, but he's an adult. But they're like, they are both blew both my phone and Jen's phone. I was like, no, 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 we already named it. Snow White. It's called Snow White. I'm like, okay, Snow White it is. So there it is. That's the story of Snow White. Okay, back to Orwell. All right, so I wanted to show you earlier, we're talking about that charge air, water to air, whatever, after cooler deal. Right there, right, eh, try to get lighting better. See that yellow tube? That yellow tube goes up to that charge air cooler behind the fan belts. And it goes right into this little rusty looking elbow that we had replaced. That is the third elbow we've put on this truck, the original and then two more. But what's leaking is that there's an O-ring in there. Try to get light better. What's leaking is the O-ring that goes in there between the tube and that elbow. That's the lower radiator tube right in here. There's an O-ring in here, and that's what's leaking. It could also be this gasket, but I'm pretty sure it's that O-ring that's failed. So we should just be able to take that apart, change the O-rings, put it back together. Now, as mentioned yesterday, it stopped leaking since it got brought in the truck. With no pressure, it quit leaking. So it's one of those, do we fix it, do we not? Well, it hasn't leaked for a year and now it's pouring when it gets cold. So yeah, it's not, the truck doesn't usually sit outside in the freezing cold all the time, but when I got shop work in here, it's gotta sit outside in the cold. So it's one of those, do we do it, do we not? It's just not that big of a thing to change out. So we're gonna go ahead and change it out. 
We'll get that elbow done, and then there's a couple other things I want to check on them, plus a basic service, and then we're going to keep on going. So now I'm waiting on the radiator to finish draining because we are going to put all new Caterpillar coolant in it. So I want to get all that old crap out and get the new Caterpillar coolant installed. Figure I show you what she's doing. So yeah, that, that thing it like adds water, puts a steam cleaner solution to it, sucks it up. You ought to see the nasty stuff that comes out of that. It's like it literally looks like brown ass coffee. Like black. It looks terrible. It's amazing how much crap gets in a rug of a truck. It might be bad enough we need to replace it. I think I found an LMC truck, new rugs for this truck being like around 350 bucks. So we might just yank it out and put a whole new rug. We'll see how how uh We'll see how good it comes out. Alrighty, boys and girls. Another thing I wanted to check. Ooh, look at that. There's a bolt missing right there. That should not be. All right, well, I'll have to adjust that bolt. That's the problem with cab overs. You don't tilt the cab up very much. When you do, you kind of uncover a lot of problems. One thing I wanted to try to do is Orwell, I, Orwell has a boost leak. And uh, I can hear it when I'm driving it because it sounds like it's at my feet, which is forward of the engine. So I don't really know. I mean, how do you build up boost while you're sitting still? Well, compressed air. But usually they check boost leaks by a smaller boot, not a boot that goes over the entire turbo housing. So I homemade this out of plumbing adapters. All it is a four inch pipe to a six inch rubber adapter, drilled and tapped the four inch pipe, put a cap on it, drilled and tapped it, and put a, a air nozzle, a, you know, coupler on it for, you know, same as your regular, um, pneumatic tools so this may work it may not work I've never tried this before but we got to try something so I'm gonna make the attempt to try to put a little bit of compressed air on the intake side of the engine and try to determine what the problem is here it doesn't have to seat perfect it's just got to seat good enough and hopefully not blow off the turbo Now I've reduced the air, condi air conditioner, the air compressor's pressure to about 25 PSI. So it should be pretty obvious if she's boost leaking or if it'll just push the boot right off that turbo. Out here, air coming out of the boot itself but it's certainly going somewhere let's go walk around and check it right here it's a gasket between the radiator and this top cap here all right i'm gonna show it to you on this side we climb up here if i climbed up you hear it Right here. See that gasket pushed out? I don't know if you hear that. From here to here. Here, you can feel it. Here. So it's a gasket between this piece and this piece. There's actually two gaskets below the radiator part and above the radiator part. I'll take that apart and show it to you. But yeah, it's on the other side, pressurized air blowing that way out of it. That's why it sounds like it's in front of me. It's actually under me. All right, so we got that problem figured out. Now we just gotta, I'm gonna look in the parts book and get part numbers and then see if Caterpillar actually has them in stock. And we'll either go get them today or tomorrow and we'll continue on you know, the process of working on this. Hopefully it'll come apart pretty easy.
they jim don't trip on those now i had acquired a new parts book or not a new one but from caterpillar parts book for 3406b so it's in pretty bad shape but it is a good book nonetheless so scroll through it cooling system you gotta find it's further down the line cooling system see here's your like your your oil cooler system your oil cooler thermostat housing water pump housing turbocharger intake you know your pressure tube to your after your after cooler they call it air intake but yeah that's that's pressurized this is the part that would boost leak in underneath this piece here now it's complicated how it comes apart here we go so there's your after cooler long story short water goes in on one way on the water goes in through the front travels through the radiator that's inside and out back into your block so in here is a series of o-rings and gaskets to seal it one from air and one from water same on this side so that has to come apart and that has to come off in order for that radiator piece to slide up there's two gaskets in there all the part numbers so i already ordered from caterpillar what all i needed the different o-rings and gaskets everything is either in stock or available tomorrow now just so you know this aluminum case down here that's about three grand the radiator inside it again about three grand i call it a radiator but it's really a charge air basically it's a heat exchanger and then this top cover is about 700 bucks well they scroll back I must have passed it there we go so here's your tubing this is the front of the engine rear of the engine this is coming from your water pump your tube coming up into your after cooler through the after cooler back into the block so your o-rings here and here o-ring here this is where the leak is that o-ring between this tube and that elbow so i need a part number 11 a part number three which is that o-ring up top Part number 11 is that gasket because I got to take the elbow off. And part number three is that O-ring in there. And that's what's leaking is the O-ring. But since I have the water drained out, I may as well pull all this apart and change out them two busted gaskets. But that's how it is. That's your Caterpillar parts book. Now bear in mind, some of the part numbers are different from what's used today. Because a lot of those part numbers are superseded by more modern part numbers as Caterpillar gone on. I don't know how old that parts book is, but it's old enough to cover that engine. Now, if you don't have a parts book, you can go to Caterpillar and they could print out that entire parts book basically, and then show you on a computer screen what parts you need. But it's kind of sometimes hard to find because like after cooler, is that cooling? Is that intake? You know, cause think about it, antifreeze goes through it. So does intake air. So which is it? So it's kind of a mix of both. So with patience, you could find it. But I always find it easier if you have a parts book, it's better to have one. That way you can just call up Caterpillar, give them the part number. They'll tell you what it supersedes to and how long it takes to come in, whether they have it in stock or not. And favorite cat up here in Green Bay, they usually stock a lot of stuff for this B model. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I can still get new components for a really old engine. I think it's pretty good in reality. I'm not the only one with a B model cat out here now. And Caterpillar, I think at a corporate level, likes the fact that their old engines are still on the road even though they're no longer having anything to do with on-road trucks but caterpillar likes to support from what i could tell from my interview with them at matt's and i'll probably talk to them again this year because i i do want to see what the oes are saying when it comes to older engines and q a and see what they, i probably will talk to them about matt's we'll see which engine manufacturers are there and i'll talk to them about engine and part supports for old vehicles like we do be a good idea i probably should do that but yeah so far from what i could tell caterpillar likes to have their old iron still on the road in the front uh rugs again yeah okay well because there is a pretty bad stain there i need to get some like uh maybe more powerful cleaner to spray on that this come up i went over this twice and that looks better than it did 
Yeah, Jen thinks that right there is rust. I think it's coffee because it seems to have dripped from that cup holder and it came down. That might be Coca-Cola or soda. I think about it too. To me, it looks like it came from here. Yeah, it's dripping but from the HVAC. If it was like coffee, I think it would have came up a lot better than it is right now. Yeah, well, the water that came out of that is pretty nasty from the first day. Yeah. So you did the back the back seat area? A little bit, yeah. I just Because I told you I'm going to go over it more than once. Right. Don't shut this off. You put enough air freshener in there. So now I don't know whether I'm smelling the truck's original smell <laughs> or the air freshener you put in there. I can smell the air freshener. I don't smell, it doesn't smell as bad. But like once I go over it like two or three times, it's just coming up okay. But like there's little spots that are hard to get into. So I need to get a um, scrub brush and scrub those spots out because I can't reach it with my steam cleaner because. They're just small spots. Yeah. Like up in here. Well, a rug could be replaced for like 350, 400 bucks. It's just, you got to bear in mind the amount of stuff that we got to do to this truck to get yeah, it I mean, to where not... it's perfect. Not, or, you know, not perfect, but safe. And then, like the exterior, like it could be left alone paint wise. Mm -hmm. So much we want to just start sanding on it and get started. But in reality, it would be nice to have it done because the goal is to have it done by end of April. That's when Lydia will need it for uh basically she'll need to drive it for an internship um her twin sister did go into debt and bought a car and then like we expected the the strings got yanked so the twin sister kind of has to abide by certain rules of a certain family member that basically co-signed the loan so that's like that's why we're going through this route because it's insane but regardless i don't want to take too much apart and not get it back together so but she's got to finish her internship in april or late april into may so that's the thing that's why i have to get it done by then so i really don't want to get started on crap that i can't really just start and stop so the rug it's kind of last thing but if you can uh get it you know steam cleaned and much nicer than that's that's get awesome the crud out of it. yeah my big thing at least for interior is to get them seats redone because them seats are pretty ripped up and nasty looking i mean they'll function but it'd be nice if they were in you know better shape than what they are. I mean, it is a 99 bourbon. I mean, it's not like it's worth a fortune, but to somebody, but to somebody without a suburban, it certainly mm -hmm. worth something. And then next time I'll probably work on the rugs again and then clean the inside of the doors and seats and stuff. Yeah. Well, by no means is it ragged out. I mean, it's in damn yeah. good shape, I think. So she consider, I mean, that's why we drove all the way down to North Carolina. I mean, not for nothing. It, you know, I went through like 1400 bucks in fuel just to go get it round trip, you know? So I don't mind it. It's just that, and we did, we did stop through Columbus so Lydia could see it. You know, I felt bad and we were like, hi Lydia, here's your truck. Bye Lydia, I gotta go home. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. I mean, it's getting there. Slowly but surely. Yeah. It's not gonna go back to work tomorrow, so. LMC truck does make that door handle. This here is broke on the other side, on the back door over there. Mm -hmm. That one's missing. LMC does make this. Um, like I said, the carpet is available. It's a full carpet molded from front to back for this truck. Um, other than that, it is leaking a little bit of oil out the front somewhere. I don't know if it's a oil cooler line or if the front of the engine's leaking, but apparently it is engine oil. It is dripping a little bit, depends on how much you run it. So, um, yeah, but I will, like I said, it does need all new tires. It does need all new brakes. We we'll don't necessarily need all new brakes, but I want to put them on anyway, just so I know it's done, done. Mm -hmm. So there it is. That yeah. Makes sense. Well, progress is getting on. All right, cool. I'm happy with it. Good. Now we just got to get this beast put together. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course we got this project. Oh my God, I cannot wait for Chris to get here. We get so much work done so much faster. Mm -hmm. What I really wish I had was another truck to drive. Because right now, I'll be honest with you, what I need to do is get, uh, I need to pick up that striker. To, uh, not tomorrow, I keep thinking today's, tomorrow. I got today and tomorrow, put Orwell back together, run out, pick up a striker, come right back. And then I can work on Orwell again, but I hate to do the whole, put the water in, pull it back out, just to drain it out, put it back in again. So I'm hoping to get everything done tomorrow, but it'd really be nice if I had another truck just to let Orwell sit, I can run and get loaded and then come back. But yeah, that's the whole reason why we got a mechanic coming because um, we're hiring, we're hiring, you know, his name's Chris. He's coming in full time. He's moving from Ohio. He's in the process of selling his house in Ohio and buying property up here. And then uh, once that process is finished, 
then he's going to start here. So hopefully um, we're planning on April. Um, worst case, he can come up with his, uh, with his fifth wheel. He's got a big toy hauler that he hauls a razor with. So he could always stay up here in the, while he's between and start working here too. That's also, a, 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 that's also an availability for him. So we're definitely trying to figure out a way to make it easy for them to do their thing. But yeah, I cannot wait to get a full-time help in here because that would just get all these projects done. I can keep driving. And then again, the idea is to get keep Orwell maintained, get the Ford running. Well, the chassis's there, cab's there. You see what I'm saying? Once, once I get something else going, I actually could do the back and forth thing. And then maybe midstream, depending on how fast Chris works and what we can do, I would actually like to try to redo another truck um, probably a conventional, but then hire a driver for it. Although I am looking into a, a, a pretty sweet Pete cab over that I'm looking into, but uh, I think me and the owner are a little far away on the price as far as what he thinks the truck's worth and what I think the truck is worth. We're probably too far away on numbers, but we'll see. But like I said, that's something. But then a constant question is, if I were to hire drivers to drive for me, would somebody drive a Pete just like Orwell? I don't know. Some people think cab overs are almost impossible to keep drivers in. Um, even Tim Gentry told me that. It's hard to keep a driver in a cab over. But if you look at what we do, we don't spend a lot of time on the road in the trucks. I'm either driving or sleeping. I don't really, I don't do, very, very rarely do I do like my 34-hour restart sitting in the truck. I'm always home. So it's like, I don't know. I, I look at it like, okay, you have to get dressed laying down, but you're sitting behind the wheel driving or you're sleeping or you're out of the truck. Why do you need a big, huge sleeper if you don't live in your truck like an RV? Why wouldn't you just drive, sleep, drive, sleep, drive, sleep, and you don't have to worry about sitting around, you know, with your thumb up in the, uh, up, you know, why would you just sit around wasting your time? And not for nothing, the other thing is too, if you did have to deal with a long layover, but you are a good driver, I don't know, would it, it'd probably be worth it to me just to pay for a hotel. That way you're kicked up with your feet up in a hotel room and uh you know living like more living more like a human but yeah i don't know that's what i'm thinking so what do you think you think it would be very hard to find a driver to drive a truck like orwell i don't think it'd be that hard provided he made good money and was treated well that's my personal opinion and not for none gentry does have a guy running full-time in amargacies so i don't know he didn't i don't think he's got any labor issues with drivers so i don't know we'll see that's the plan anyway. That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm going to get started pulling Orwell apart, getting these, uh, start taking it after cooler apart, and uh, probably call it a day once I have it actually disassembled. <laughs> boys and girls so we gotta take all this stuff off to be able to lift this up so i may as well we gotta change fuel filters anyway so i may as well go ahead and get that done uh, we'll we reinstall them once we put it all back together This one didn't have to come off because that stayed. Just this top one on both of the top. That's okay. We also got to loosen up the power steering reservoir to slide it aside. All right, fuel filters are out. Now, these bolts on the top are 12.5 sixteenths. So, the first ones I'm going to undo are the ones that not only keep the top on but also hold the fuel water separator bracket on it'll be the first to come out i have not had this apart since i rebuilt orwell's engine back in the day 
clearly I put enough never sees on them bolts you see that copper on there now what I want to make sure is that there's not a different I think there might have been a different length of bolt the longer one being for something holding a bracket on so we're gonna take them out and we're gonna pull the next one and see if there's a length difference Again, these housings are available, but they're quite expensive. Actually, he's kind of long. So, let's see. That came out there. That came out there. All right, they're the same length. I wasn't sure. We'll just start stacking them here. Some may probably ask, how come I don't use an impact on these? Well, to be honest, I don't have an electric impact. I haven't bought one yet, number one. <laughs> I bought one from Matt, not me. That's kind of funny. The other one is I'd rather take them off by hand and work them slow. That way, if anybody gets stuck, I'll feel it, rather than break a bolt or, God forbid, crack a $3,000 aluminum housing. And then I would my life would suck because I'd have to spend more money that I wanted to spend on a spend more money that I wanted to spend on a simple repair just think about it basically thousand bucks 3500 3500 so 35 and 35 that's seven so a thousand that's eight that's eight thousand dollar after cooler if you bought the entire thing new what's the air to air cost Now that's genuine caterpillar. Obviously, I could probably have a shop make me a new one, but I don't know, it seems like a lot of work for nothing. Making the money I'm not spending running a truck like Orwell, right? That's how I view it in any case. All right, so I did the front again. Not as well as I did the other day, but I'm gonna go over it again. I need to find some more powerful stain lifter. But some of these stains might not come out just because it's old. Well, I'll be honest with you. The big thing that I'm thinking is just clean all of the rug, the back seats, the back of the truck, and then mm -hmm. see what it smells like. If that smoker smell doesn't go away, then we might just have to get a new rug. But so I don't overdo it, one spot. So I'm saying you oh, might, no, I'm you might literally be throwing thing. your clean rug in the garbage. I know. And that's that would feel I'm, terrible. <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of, putting all this hard work in and then getting a new rug when we should have just... Probably got to do a rug in the beginning, but that's okay. Plus, I think the smell is if he smoked in here, it's probably the seats need to be wiped down because they probably smell like cigarette smoke. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, if you... The windows he might have cleaned on the inside, but a lot of, like, if you smoke in a car, it sticks to the windows, and that probably needs to be cleaned, which... The hardest thing is... Well, see, you just did the damn dually windshield because all the dust from my parents' house from all the time over there. Yeah. There was a lot of dust on the windshield still because every time I go, every, every time I go to Texas to visit my parents, and I was there for a month. I mean, you look at my dad's expedition, you literally can make mud pies just off the dirt that's on his dashboard. I mean, it's incredibly bad. So the dually was wrecked. So she just cleaned the window for that. I couldn't believe how much of that dust was just on the inside glass because it came very obvious when I got back from Ohio. So it condensated. One night I slept in the back of the truck and the condensation was on the inside of the glass and it kind of like made watermarks in the dust. And I'm like trying to clean the window with the windshield wipers. And I'm like, that's on the inside. <laughs> so she's got a nice little, that's what my dad, my dad pointed this out to you. The, yeah. What do they call it? The invisible glass, that little plastic yeah. thing. So yeah, usually when you smoke in a car, it sticks to everything. So everything really needs to be wiped down. I actually put my steam cleaner across this little part right here. <laughs> but that wasn't that dirty, but still. But like I need to get like a scrub brush and try to scrub those stains out because I just can't get to it with All the right, steam with the seatbelt hooks yeah. under here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just everything needs to be wiped down. Wiping it down. The hardest thing, like I said, is the rugs. Because I'll have to go over them a few times just to make sure like the front in the middle 
Uh, I just went over that again, and that looks pretty good now. So, well, one thing we could do it might make it easier is these seats are made to like the square body suburban. This folds that way, and then the back folds down, making it a flat floor in the bottom here. Mm -hmm. But we can unbolt these. Might make it easier for you. Oh yeah. If we take the seats out of the truck, unbolt them, and put them on the shop floor. Then he could scrub a dub dub them all the way sitting on the shop floor. Mm -hmm. Now the back seats there, they just unhook. There's a latch on the back to take that seat out. But mm -hmm. it's in there because, you know, the guy, well, to be honest, I don't know if he had a place to store it. It was easier to shift the truck with the seats in than without. But, you know, we could take the seats out and you could clean them. These got to come out anyway to go upholstery is what I'm really, really hoping to do. Mm -hmm. So this is probably all going to get thrown in the trash. As yeah. far as the, the upholstery goes. But I'll still wipe it down just to get the stink out of it for now. Because um, I don't know when you're sending them out. So I got to start looking to find a shop for that pretty soon. Because there might be a wait time for these. But yeah. The other thing to consider now is that the truck is in its space where it can stay for a while. So if we take the seats out and the truck don't move. Where it is in the shop is acceptable for it to stay. Yeah. And if these seats were out, it would make it a whole lot easier to clean the... Floor, for sure because it's gonna like twist and turn myself in different weird ways to get to spots but and then after a while my wrist starts hurting with that machine because you just hold it in one spot and you keep squeezing the water around this is like uh. <laughs> well, either way i be i mean goes without saying i appreciate the fact that you're doing this oh and she's thanked me so many times already for i said i'll do the best i can you know, so and they're both thankful, so about everything. And they show it. Yeah, last I saw Matthew when I picked this truck up, um, he was just thanking me over and over and over again. I don't I don't think I ever got as many hugs off of him as I did that last trip. And to be honest, he's uh he's learning what it's like to be an adult now. So he genuinely misses home. Like he tells me all the time, he misses home. He misses, you know, Jen's cooking and, you know, all of that, not having to worry about all the stuff that he has to deal with now. So, you know, he literally just, you know, he goes out to eat. He goes to the chow hall to get himself dinner if, when he can. It's, it's a mess with him with when he can get chow. But, yeah, he misses being home and the home-cooked meals and laundry being done for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he misses that stuff. But he's very grateful for what we're doing and, I know he can't wait for uh, him and Lydia to actually move in together and start their life together and have their, their Suburban and their, you know, like I said, Matt really, really, the other thing he really wants too is Mr. Beefy back. Oh yeah. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get that started here eventually. And I kinda, I razz him, I'm like, yeah, there's Mr. Beefy's engine right there. Cause what the truck cost me, probably, well, between the trucks, transportation and the purchase price, I probably could have rebuilt that V10 in Mr. Beefy for him, to be honest. Yeah. But what does Lydia drive? Mm -hmm. So uh, she just doesn't really want to drive popcorn, and frankly, I don't blame her. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to dump our dirty water out again. Dirty what? Water. Oh, water this time. <laughs> water. Water. <laughs> She's from Philly, so water. That's how they say it. And, and what do you drive on a? Street. A street, not street, a street. Street. Right. <laughs> That's not coffee. Actually, it's a little tiny bit lighter than the last load. Oh, I we did that. the live? Oh, that stuff was straight black. <laughs> it was. Like darker than dark coffee. Dark roast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was nasty. But that's all that yuckiness that you got out of just the carpets. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume some of that smoke too. Cigarette smoke. Like I said, it sticks to everything. Yeah, that's the thing I think about like when it comes to putting a driver in a truck. It's like, I get it, you know, people smoke. I mean, heck, I smoke cigars, but I don't smoke in the vehicles. To be honest, I used to smoke cigars in my 379, and it, it the interior was pretty bad. By the time I sold it, it was pretty bad. And I'll never do that to a truck again. So that's kind of one of those things that worry me about hiring a driver. So if he's a smoker, he's gonna to wanna to fire up, you know, Marlboro or whatever he smokes in the truck, and then my truck is gonna stink like the Suburban does, and you know, like, I don't know, how am I ever gonna put a driver in a truck if the truck stinks to high heaven? And if you have, you know, maybe you need to have rules. 
smoking in the vehicles. Yeah, but that it's hard to find labor. That's true it's too. it's that's the thing. It's kinda like what do you do? Some people I guess some truck drivers that smoke are like chain smokers and you can't stop every two seconds to smoke a cigarette. Well that's why I don't take get nowhere. <laughs> well everybody ma laughs at me, but I'm like, that's why Jen's always saying, why don't you take something to snack on? I'm like, cause I'll eat because I'm bored. <laughs> like literally I just sit there and eat because I'm just bored to tears. So I'm like, no, you know how fat I'd be if I just Kept snacks in a truck and ate whenever I had nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not good. So, now you like your snacks on the long car rides. Yeah. But, you know, it's a little different. It's not like we do that all the time. But, no, I can't. I can't. But that's the thing, too. If you're just sitting in a truck. I, and I know you guys are the same. I know you guys are smokers. I'm sorry. But, you know, you just get bored. So, you just light it. Mm -hmm. Smoke. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, you're 15 minutes later. If even that long, you're bored. Light another one. It's, and it's bad for you, and you're just destroying the interior of your truck. So, you know, that's the thing. I really have to seriously consider when it comes to hiring a driver to drive for me, whether uh, I'll let a smoker in a truck. But I don't know. I guess I'll have to figure out. I guess I'm paying how much and how clean you are. Now, look at my best friend, Bino. You know, he smokes a lot, mm -hmm. but his truck smells like roses. You know, so it's like, I don't know. There's ways to not have your, there's ways to smoke and not have your rig smell like, you know, an ashtray. But I don't know. It's something to think about. Yeah. Now Orwell, the original owner of Orwell, um, he smoked, and you could tell. I mean, you could tell that there's still smoke in that, you know, in the interior of that thing. Because honestly, we were supposed to, but we never actually really did a deep, deep clean in Orwell since we bought it. I don't remember cleaning it at all. No, we just vacuumed it. We we put the new glass. And you cleaned the inside and outside of glass. It looked like it wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. But other than the occasional vacuum, I never really like deep, deep cleaned Orwell. But to be honest, Orwell should just get a new interior. That's why I'm working on, oh, not for the Ford over there <laughs> and over there. But yeah, that's the idea. Orwell's got to get an interior and I'm really thinking about sending them out also to get painted. So we'll see. But if when he gets painted, it's going to look the same exactly as it does now. It's pedigree has to shine through. All right, well, now you saw what's the aftermath of the suburban cleaning. Still more to do, though. Yeah. All right, well, maybe next week we'll actually start on mechanical stuff on it, too. Yeah. I'm eager to jump into that, but busy, busy. Oh, whatever. What I got to do now is loosen the turbo housing so I can unbolt that and just rock the intake tube over. So I'll provide it just clamp the brake. Okay. It'll just roll. Oh, baby. Hi, baby. I'll see you. You want to keep your chicken here? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I could bring it home because I might get hungry later. Right. Oh, give me a kissy. Love you. Love you. Thank you. You're welcome. I see you when I get home. Okay. Hi, baby. No, I think I was going to maybe do, maybe, because then I can get a shower after that. Maybe I'll put the sauce and the uh, meatballs in the slow cooker. For a couple of hours, not for eight hours. Like to keep it warm? If you want, if you can dirty another whole thing. I don't care about that. Might as well be dirty or anything. We got dirty too far. Well, you're, you're doing the cleaning. All right. Not me. Well, I'm stuck over here slaving over a hot engine. Yeah. Actually, it ain't hot at all. It just sounded cool for the video. <laughs> Bye, baby. Bye. There we go. So it's just two long bolts go through it, and then once these are out, I just rock that assembly up on that turbo. Clamp loose. There's your boost tube. I welded these on when I replaced the turbo last. I had to replace those O-rings, so I just welded tabs on and just push them off with those bolt holes. Because let me tell you, those O-rings are a complete pain to take off. Excellent, that's done. Now the reason I took that loose is because, see these bolts? You can't get them off with this bracket on. So that comes off, just a gasket in there is all it is. I assume for a different engine it could have had 
like twins, like a V12. If there was a 3412 built in this era, the air comes through, pressurizes both of them perhaps, I'm guessing, but you gotta get these bolts out. And you can't get them bolts out with that plate on either side. So, there's these two are regular headed bolts, and then these two, and then these two. Six in total. I think there should have been four, but it might have been the housing was damaged. So they put those style on the other side. Shot. There's your gasket. Hey, there's your cover. And it looks like right there is where the gasket failed. I failed on the lower side of it too. Alright. Cleaned up pretty easy. So I was trying to show you earlier is if you look straight down, you'll see it's like a radiator. So the compressed air goes straight through the unit right there. So you see how the radiator is, I call it radiator, it's the heat exchanger basically. But there's water that goes through there like a radiator does. In through here, that tube right there, right, right there, through, it's about that deep sits in this cavity. This is all compressed air and it comes out through here. So all I have to do is take this manifold off and take that manifold off. And then once it's out, it'll lift up and out of the, the housing. We don't have to take the housing off. We just have to take this off. The radiator's gotta come out. Otherwise, cause there's a, hard to see, the top of it's a flat plate and there's another gasket between this flat plate and this aluminum housing. And it's blown out on this side. You could like see here, see? That's the boost leak right there. See? That's what's got to come out. All right, next step, taking the water manifolds out. So I guess we'll start with the back and then work to the front maybe? Not really sure, we'll figure it out. All right, so this is either ingenious or incredibly careless, one or the other. So this gasket here is for water. Okay, what all it does is it takes water from out here into that tube going down back into the engine block down here. Between this and this housing are O-rings. So this piece will pry out. Hopefully, comes out easy. It takes a little knowledge. I hope these videos help. I'm assuming that's why Caterpillar put them holes in there. So what's gonna come out, it's gonna look like a tube on the back of this housing. See the water come out? Where's the O-ring? Oh, the O-ring is on the inside. Okay. So this simply seals the water on the inside of that heat exchanger. I'm gonna call it radiator, but it's really a heat exchanger. Um, anyway, this seals the water from coming into that. This goes into the heat exchanger directly. The other gasket right here between this housing and this, this will pop out. And this here keeps the compression in that housing is how that works. So now we'll pry on this gently. Take it out. I think there's other O-rings in there too. I may have to call scatter pillar. A scatter pillar. I probably shouldn't call it that. If I remember right, I may have to call again to verify about the O rings. Yep, right there. So there's an O ring outside and an O ring in. I'm going to have to call them, make sure I get that, got that right. All right, so that gasket's the same as the other one, but that gasket keeps the compression out. See that tube right there? That's not a tube, that's the heat exchanger. So like I said, it's kind of convenient we're doing this now and here. 
that came out easy here's your gasket sorry gasket was in here it's still on this housing your o-ring i got a new one coming this comes out and that comes out o-ring inside that housing if i didn't break it if not i just spent three grand and this is gonna be stubborn gasket's loose. Alright, does have a limit. Two screwdrivers in there. One low, one high. It'll come up a hand now. Makes it seem like it will come out by hand. It's not gonna though. It'll fight me. There we go. Roll that o ring out. There, excellent. Why is that there? What is that? The pink stuff. There we go. All right, that's out the way. All right, so now I'm gonna lift what I've been calling the heat exchanger out of the engine. It is not light. Now the heat exchanger is upside down. And I'm trying to... That's leftover coolant. That's got to be crunchy coolant. I'm looking to see if it's originating from a bad O-ring. But it's... That looks like it's coming out of that piece there I'm willing to bet you this heat exchanger shot this is crunchy parts of coolant Look at the other side over here ah, like this
it's not all the way to the o-ring this is the original one that came out but this side ain't that bad it's just stained a little how's the airflow go airflow goes down but it's double backing To me, this looks like a big chunk of coolant right there. That was not there when we put this in. This was not like this at all. And that's so bad. I don't think it came out of that, that gasket. That gasket don't look, the O-ring don't look messed up at all. I think it's bubbling from that seam right where this meets that, or the fingers. So you've been dumping She's been dumping water in that hole for a while. Let's go look and see what the inside of the housing looks like. <sighs> yeah, that ain't good. That ain't good at all. I wasn't, man, I was, I don't know, G over at Caterpillar said that that thing's like three grand or 35, 34 bucks. I'm like, oh, well, let's see. Let's look and see. That was the front side of it so let's take a peek down in there oh yeah she's been dumping a lot of water in cylinder one so you can fix the light or get better lighting yeah look down in there cylinder one has been inundated with water for a while now okay there's dripping down in there. Drips there and it's been going to cylinder one mostly. Cylinder two. And then three, four, five, and six. The boost leak was right here. Between there and there. Center screen is where boost leak was. See it blowing on the on the manifold. Not the manifold, the rocker box is right there. Ooh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I guess it hadn't, hoping it hasn't done any damage to, to the engine. I don't think so. I don't think it's been dripping far enough or fast enough to like try to hydro lock it, but that's certainly been a problem. So I'm not gonna tear it apart just cause we were burning, clearly we we're burning water. So that's a good thing we found it. Um, pissed as I am, it's a good thing we found it. But yeah, um, yikes, not good, not good. Well, whatever. Just put a new heat exchanger in it. We're in it this far. All right, so that's uh, that's that. Let me call Caterpillar. Get one on order. Should be here tomorrow. Thank you for calling, Saber Cat. Hello. I need parts again, please. Thank you. It'd be nice if there's a part number on this heat exchanger. Hey, Jaden. Jaden, how you doing? Steve Feshek calling. So far, I spoke to G, I spoke to Bob, and now I'm speaking with you. I've uh, been. Oh, got an old B model cat. I've been working on fixing a boost leak. And uh, when I took the heat, ex I call it a heat exchanger, the intercooler apart, the uh, the core apparently is shot also. It's putting antifreeze down in cylinder one. So I need to order one. G told me he can get one. Now I'm looking through an old parts book and trying to go off the serial number. Apparently according to my parts book, there are two different ones that were available, but the problem is what I'm seeing on the book doesn't match my engine serial number exactly. So I probably need help to determine which core I need. According to my system, because it brings up little yellow triangles, anything that's not associated with the serial number. Okay. I found a 1W4879. That's the core assembly for the after cooler. Okay. Now the fun part is... I need one. I can have one here in two days. 
two days. Thursday. Ooh. That's not fun. Okay. Um. What did? Expensive as well. Yeah. What are we looking? Well, I mean, it says it's seventy pounds. Seventy pounds? What? Sterling? Like British? <laughs> British currency? No. no. <laughs> seventy pounds in weight. It ain't. It ain't light. And uh, you're looking at almost forty-two hundred bucks. I have to have the most expensive one they make. I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's the right one for this motor. Are you sure on that? that? That's what it says. Let me double check with G. He's pretty good at these truck engines. Okay. Because he, he, he told me what it was. He told me it was like 3500 35 Yeah, ish. What did you find for this guy, G? The cooler core? Tell me it's fast check on the phone. Which one uh, did you quote him? Talk to Steve. Is Steve fast check? Yeah, one W. A one W forty eight seventy nine. Yeah, I quoted three thousand. Oh, you gave him around forty two. I gave him this one. One W six nine zero. Oh, it's time to give him the engine number. Oh, I got it. Oh, that's the engine number. Yeah. Okay, so that's the right one, right? Yeah, one W. Yep. Earlier, he didn't have a serial number, so oh. I just quoted what I found. Okay. He said he didn't have a serial number with him before, so he looked up a different one. Right. But he said he said the one I just told you is the right one. Okay, and that's 4200 bucks. Yeah, 418416. Yeah. What's that? $4,184.16. Man, oh man, you got no good news for me. Okay, well, you can get it Thursday, though, right? Yep. No, any shot on tomorrow or no? Like, where's it coming from? It's kind of late, but we can try. Yeah, if it comes tomorrow, that's better. try to get it for tomorrow from St. Paul. Oh, is that where it's coming from? Because yeah, other crap's coming in from St. Paul, too, so hopefully, yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Was it a phone call you got to make or just put it in a computer or what? Just put it in the computer. Okay, and there's no way to verify today if it's going to be here today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. There's 25% it would still come Thursday. Alright, what time What time would I know by tomorrow? Just so I could call. Because I, I need the truck running. So right in the morning. Uh, right in the morning, 7.30. Okay, alright. So I'll call you guys in the morning and see if it made it in or not. Okay. Excellent. Alrighty. Well, thanks for the bad news, but at least thanks for getting it for me. Alrighty. Alright, brother. Push for, for tomorrow. Yep, yep. All right, have a good one, man. Yep. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love it. Whew. All right, well, there. I guess there it is. See, I forget what, I don't even know what part number, which one it was. But anyway, according to what they're looking at, body engine serial number, that's $4,200 after cooler. $4,200 after cooler. Yikes! If anybody makes it aftermarket, I probably looked that up. Whoosh. Wonder if anybody does. I gotta probably look into that. <sighs> okay, that's it. I'm probably, what time is it? Closing on five. It's probably time to go home. <laughs> Butter the insider. Only soy latte lovers will love the new 2024 Dodge Charger EV Daytona. Yeah, he does uh, uh, um, car content. Talking about Dodge and all their stuff. So, Butter the insider. I like that guy. He's a good dude. I like his channel. All right, $4,200 for an after cooler. Yay, yay, yay. Well, I guess considering all the expenses Orwell doesn't have, being it's an older truck, I guess that's not too terrible. Man, this is just 
I'm not happy about that at all. Oh well, it is what it is.